Hi, this is Helene Andraski, sheltering at home in Madison, Wisconsin, and missing all my new made friends from the Dickens universe. I would like to share with you uh, my favorite passage, which actually is the entire of A Christmas Carol, his masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, however, um, I will just confine myself to one passage to illustrate my point. As many of you do, I'm sure, and if you don't, I highly recommend it. My husband and I read A Christmas Carol out loud to each other each holiday season, and we have come to see that the sound of the words really enhances the text. But lately, I have also come to realize that the feel of the words as you are saying them out loud further enhances the sound and the text and the meaning. I'd like to give a special shout out to Christian who has um, taught us the joys of the close readings of Dickens and um, let you know that I'm taking this to a new level. So. The passage that I would like uh, to share with you to illustrate my point um, is when we first encounter Scrooge at near the beginning of A Christmas Carol in Stave One, Marley's Ghost. At this point, just watch my face while I'm doing this. And of course, I'm going to exaggerate for effect. But if you can't exaggerate with Dickens, then I don't know where you can. So here we go. Oh. But he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone Scrooge, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out generous flame, secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. So, what happens when you're reading this passage? You cannot say those words, squeezing, wrenching, grasping, without squeezing, wrenching, and grasping your face. Just it all crabs up. When you're talking about his secretiveness, you have to hiss as if you are hissing at a staid villain in a Victorian melodrama. And when you are speaking out the words that describe what Scrooge is not, generous fire, your face opens up, you almost smile. So you are now getting an enhanced sense of what Scrooge is. You've seen the words on the page, you have heard them, which adds to it, but now you can feel what it's like to be Scrooge. There are passages throughout this book that have the similar effect. I dare you to read out loud the passages describing the grocers on Christmas Eve or the throne upon which the spirit of Christmas present sits without having your mouth water gratis and maybe feel subsequently bilious. I dare you to say the name Fezziwig without smiling. You can't do it. And when you get to the end, and my husband's favorite passage, when the redeemed Scrooge realizes that the spirits have done it all in one night and he has not missed Christmas, when you whoop, hello, you're going to feel happy no matter what. So I encourage you to read out loud a Christmas carol and not only listen to the words, but feel the words because I have a feeling that this upcoming holiday season, we're all going to need a bit of extra cheer. So I hope that this has, has inspired you to do it, as I said, and I hope to see you all next year at the Dickens Universe. By the way, don't forget to check back soon for another installment of Dickens to go. With.